Welcome to a 360 degree passenger ride video on the Mercedes GLA. So let's go. What a beautiful day we have today. It's absolutely peeing it down. Mm. So here we go. Now this particular car that I'm driving is the GLA 250, which means it's the petrol. Two litre petrol, over 200 horsepower and yeah, it goes pretty quick, but it also makes that noise. It's a bit of a racket. Smooth enough though, smooth enough, but it does affect the economy. I think we're getting, oh yes, under 30 miles per gallon. And we've been driving it rather sedately apart from that moment just then. It comes to standard with the automatic gearbox, and I love with Mercedes the way they have the gear selector up there. It's nice and easy, best place for it. I don't know why people put it down here in other cars. It's a great place for it. So to drive, let me just put a bit of demistage on because it is going to start to mist up a bit. Ah, that's another thing. I remember with Mercedes, the windscreen wipers are rotatory here, just to make your life a little bit confusing if you come from other cars. So to drive then, it's it's actually not bad this. Some motor journalists complain about it, but the ride's all right because it's jacked up by probably about that much maybe over the a class on which it's based and that just makes it feel more comfortable it really does it handles well enough as well the only problem is this the steering no idea what the wheels are doing i know they're turning that way because i'm going that way but there's no feel or anything it's just it's a bit like playing a computer game now most glas are all-wheel drive so you've got added grip but the fact is you don't really need it on the engine level diesel engine the 200d you can get it with front wheel drive and you can get that really and just save yourself some money i really am struggling here to come on see these buttons probably aren't the easiest to use on a move there we go come on demist demist as i was saying they're not the easiest to move look there, there we go going around that corner pretty well there it's really slippy this track and it's gripping and it's going around it's doing its job nicely so it handles well enough it's reasonably quiet, you do get a bit of tire roar. Once again, I can't see anything, can't see anything. Thank God I'm on a closed road. Come on. Max. Come on, demist. And that brings me to another thing with this car. Not only can those buttons be a bit fiddly down there when you're not used to them. Visibility isn't as good as you might think on a car such as this. Yeah, you do sit higher than a normal hatchback, but not by much, and the sleep well, the sleek windscreen like that, and the fact that you've got quite a small back window, very small windows all around actually, it does make it feel a bit dark. So if you look around the cabin, you'll see how dark it is in there, especially in the back. I mean, you probably can't see anything. It's like the abyss. Don't know if you can hear me at all actually without blasting away, but yeah, it's, it's an all right car. It looks good. Some of the materials are a bit poor. The infotainment system on this one, we've got the mid-level sat-nav. So it's just a Garmin sat-nav, not the full-on command online that you get with real posh high-end Mercedes. It's all right. The infotainment system, no BMW iDrive, but once again, it works all right. But it is just that visibility that does just make it feel a bit dark and dingy in here. Though, it does make it feel more sporty, and some people will like that. Now, if you click up there in the top right-hand corner of the screen, you can see more content on this car. And yeah, thanks for joining me for this passenger ride. I'll see you soon.